Hello, I'm Toru Takeuchi at Tokyo Tech, Sharing Working Group 8. Today, I talk about the buckling strengths of grid shell domes with grid pairing and I beams. The grid pairing system consists of square hollow section tubes assembled in a lattice pattern and has been used for roof pairings for school gymnasiums supported by steel frames. It is assembled in unit by welding and is fixed to the main frames through site welding. Recently, robotic welding processes have been introduced in this unit shop assemblies. In this paper, the shell behavior and buckling strengths of a lattice dome composed of this grid powering weld onto I section beams are described using shell theories. As shown here, a grid shell dome with a span of 30 meters and a rise of 4 meters was set for this, this study. 12 curved I-shaped beams, hereafter I-beams, were placed radially along the spherical surface surrounded by a tension ring beam. First, the in-plane membrane force distributions in the three configurations of domes and the vertical loading are analyzed and compared with the classical continuum shell theory. The load per unit surface area is assumed to be 1 MPa, the radius of curvature is 30 meters. For a dome with this span and half subtended angle of 30 degrees, the in-plane force is compressive in both directions. The in-plane force distributions in the latitudinal directions and the longitudinal directions in each model are shown here, which is close to that of the continuum shell theory with orange line, except for the boundary area in the longitudinal directions. In the PV model with a grid shell and I-beams, a force concentration is observed in the latitudinal direction caused by the high stiffness owing to the aggregation of the I-beams. In contrast, the forces in the longitudinal directions are released. In the PBR1 model, in which I-beams are trimmed at the top and the compression rings is included, the force concentration is moderated around the ring compared with the PV model. The evaluation process of the buckling strength of general grid shell is shown here. The elastic buckling strength is known to be reduced by the linear buckling strength. The ratio of the reduction is defined as the knockdown factor alpha. The elastoplastic buckling strength is further reduced owing to the yield of the members. First, the linear buckling strengths were evaluated using these three models. The grid pairing model with only grid pairings, the grid pairing plus stick I-beams, and the grid pairing with shell I-beam model, where the I-beam were modeled with the shell element to express the lateral torsional buckling of the I-beams. The results of the linear eigenvalue analysis are shown here. The initial imperfection was determined using linear eigenvalue analysis. The shell I-beam model exhibited a slightly higher linear buckling strength. The linear buckling load can be obtained using the continuum substitution method considering the orthogonal anisotropy of the good body model from the equation shown here. A comparison between the eigenvalue analytical result and the evaluation equation is shown in the right. The linear buckling load of the PV model was higher than that of the P model. Next, the elastic buckling of the grid party and the I beams, considering geometric nonlinearity and initial imperfection, is discussed. The initial imperfection assumed in the pushover analysis are shown here. The obtained vertical load displacement relationship per unit surface area for each model is shown here. In the PD models, the grid pairing buckled first, however, the bearing force increased until the I-beam buckled. The knockdown factor, and evaluated from the ratio of the elastic buckling strength of the grid pairing to the linear buckling strength, was approximately 0.5, 
which is recommended in Working Group 8 guide. This figure shows the vertical load displacement relationship at the center of the I-beam obtained using elastic pushover analysis, as well as the location of yielded members as orange marks. The yielded members in the PV models were distributed at grid party members beside the I-beam, and the I-beam yield soon after. In contrast to elastic buckling, no increase in the bearing capacity was observed after the buckling of the grid parting. In the Working Group 8 guide, the elastic buckling capacity can be evaluated by applying normalized slenderness ratio and clamp curves to the elastic buckling strength as shown in the left. As in the right, the proposed method evaluates the result of elastic FEM analysis on the safer side. The possible future applications of the grid parting system are shown here. The current main applications of grid parting are limited to additional secondary members attached to the main frames, but the grid parting operated as part of the main members together with the I-beams with shell action, which may expand to the design applicability as free-form grid shells only with grid parting system. Thank you very much for your kind attention.